This is my old display setup. And this is my new one. This is an ultra wide monitor called the LG 40WP95C W. It's an ultra wide monitor designed for productivity, and I've been using it for the past two weeks to do a lot of work, play some games, and generally put it through its paces. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the good, the bad, and whether I would recommend this to anyone else. Hey, I'm Wayne, this is my channel, let's get into the video. First of all, let's start off with some background. I work as a designer and my office and desk setup is 90% around productivity, doing work stuff, and with a bit of gaming on the side. The old monitor I had was perfectly fine, just fine. It was a 4K monitor, it was 27 inches, but that was starting to grind on me a little bit. So let me tell you the two reasons why I thought about upgrading. First, there's eye strain. So 27 inches seems like a lot, but I like having my monitor further back to clear the area in front of me to put my tablet and just have clear space, it's nice. And I found myself leaning forward a lot to look at details and I was starting to squint and that was starting to really bother me. The other thing that got on me was trying to multitask using complex pro tools. So let me explain this. I would categorize my tooling into primary tools and supporting tools. The primary ones are ones that I try and use full screen whenever possible. That would be Figma, Final Cut, Blender. These tools all have complex UIs and lots of panels. Now on the supporting app side, we have things like Notion, Zoom, Slack, and of course, web browsers. These UIs are a lot simpler, smaller, and tend to be more focused. The problem is when I try to combine these on one screen. This has always felt crammed to me. So those were my reasons, eye strain and multitasking. And I know that those don't seem like super killer, kind of severe pain points to be resolving, but on the other side, I do spend eight to 10 hours a day looking at my primary display. So I thought it was worth experimenting to try and upgrade. So let me explain why I started going in the direction of ultra wide monitors to try and solve this. My starting point to address eye strain was looking at upsizing to 32 inch monitors. It's the next common step up in terms of sizing. And I've read that some people think that's actually more ideal for 4K resolution. So that could help my eye strain and my posture, but what about screen real estate? That doesn't really affect that because the resolution is the same. I also had my requirement of sticking with 4K at least because I've been using 4K for a long time and the detail is really nice. I refuse to go lower than that. I just need more space. On the topic of resolution, that's why I also didn't get interested in gaming ultra wides. Those tend to have a higher horizontal resolution, but they have less vertical. It's a trade off. But then I saw this monitor. There's no resolution compromise here. It starts with full K, but then there's just more on the side. So it ends up being 5K wide by about 2K tall, which is what 4K height is. So that got me excited. But looking at this monitor also got me a little bit worried because monitors of this size end up going into curved territory and curved monitors are something that I haven't used before. They're more common in gaming, and that distortion seems fine there, more immersive, but is that okay for work? Is that okay for design work in particular? I didn't know, but it was really hard to find out because not many people are doing that online. So I decided to try and experiment for myself. I was also a little concerned about it feeling too large. I had scoffed at people online using 42 inch TVs on their desk that also seemed ridiculous to me. And yet here I am with a 40 inch monitor, which is pretty dang close and trying to make that work for me. Fortunately, when it comes to testing, a lot of stores have 30 day return policy. So as long as I didn't break the thing, I could test it out for a couple of weeks and make my valuation, keep it or return it. So I went for it. Here's more on what this monitor has. Okay, let's talk about the monitor. So once again, it's an LG 40, whatever. It has a long model name. It is a 40 inch monitor corner to corner. That's 21 by nine aspect ratio, which is different from the standard 16 by nine aspect ratio. The height of this is around the same as the 16 by nine 32 inch monitor. So think of that, except it is wider. It also has a very minor curve to it. It's the least curved monitor I've seen, which is, I thought if I was going to give this a shot, this would be a better, safer starting point. So did this monitor address my pain points and how did it handle my concerns around curvature and just overall size? Let's get into my two week review. 
For the past two weeks, I've been using this during my day job. So that's a full day of work doing design stuff and also doing some hobby and side projects in the evening along with some gaming. So I've been using this monitor a lot over the past two weeks. Let's start with productivity. I'm gonna break this into two different scenarios. The first scenario is full screen apps. My experiences with full screen apps went one of two ways. Either they were fantastic full screen on this monitor or they were ridiculous. Let me explain. Figma was always good on my old 16 by nine setup when it was full screen. Figma also has two sidebars, but full screen is great. But is that too much for 21 by nine? Would they feel really far apart and awkward? No, it's fine apparently. Going in, I was worried that the sidebars would feel too far away because they are literally over two feet away from each other. Turns out if you are an experienced user of Figma, you know exactly what's on those sidebars. So you're not really thinking about trying to find them. You just go to them and do what you need to do. I was mostly focused on how big and expansive the canvas was. It was gloriously large. Next up, I wanna talk about some video editing. This is something I heard was just great on these monitors and it's, it's true, it is great. So video editing has timelines spanning the entire width of your display typically, but it also has a lot of different UI panels and that extra real estate is also really nice for video editing. So this was fantastic, but these were the most complex things. So primary tools, especially the most complex ones are great on an ultra wide like this. But what about the more supporting tools that are simpler and more focused? Well, many apps don't use this space. They feel empty with it. Let's use Notion as an example. Full screen, you get either a big white or dark gray void on either side. Columns of text have an optimal readable width, so they shouldn't be expanding beyond that. And it does look kind of ridiculous on this monitor. My solution for that is when I focus, like when I'm writing in Notion, is to not full screen them. I've set up a shortcut using Rectangle Pro to center and expand it to either one third or one half of the screen width. And I just leave open space on either side. I don't want to fill it with anything. And I prefer to see my nice wallpaper on the sides rather than a white or dark void. So that's my take on full screen apps on this monitor. The complex ones are really great and the simple ones, not so great, but it's an easily solvable problem too. Okay, let's talk about scenario two, which is with two apps up at once, which is back to my original pain point with multitasking. Once again, even with my old monitor, I would typically divide things into thirds or halves. Let's start with my most common combination, and that is Figma using two thirds of my monitor and something else on the other side, which is often Notion as the other third. This is where it really starts to shine for me. In the two third, one third split, Figma is close to what a full screen 16 by nine version would be. It's 90% of the width. And the other third doesn't feel cramped at all. Notion doesn't even reduce the width of the content at that size, it's just full width. Most websites won't either because a lot of websites top out at 1440 or 1280 or some lesser breakpoint. So websites don't even have to compress. Also, if I'm on a Zoom call, I can easily fit the large grid of thumbnails of other participants in that third nicely, which I like because I like being able to read the expressions of people in the meeting. So for two apps, this felt really, really good, spacious and uncompromising. As a side note, I haven't done this much, but three apps side by side is comfy as well. Typically, this is more of Notion and browsers and maybe Slack. So unsurprisingly, it works really well, even though you don't end up doing it that often. OK, let's talk about the curvature. So I've never used a monitor of this size that was flat, so I don't have a direct point of reference. But for me, I kind of like it. I forgot that it's even curved, to be honest. It just feels right. The only real flaw that I've had with this is something I read about ahead of time, and that is how curved surfaces and monitors are going to handle reflections. Something about the distortion of it makes reflections more apparent to you when you see them. It's harder to ignore. I actually have a light over here, which I use mostly now for filming because that light didn't used to bother me at all, but now it is really apparent on this monitor. Here's what it looks like from my default sitting position. I can see it in the corner of my eye and it kind of washes out that corner. So when I'm working, I actually end up turning that light off. So it just goes away. I don't have to deal with it. So if you don't have a lot of control over your lighting situation in your work environment, a curved monitor might be something to maybe not go for. But for me, I have a lot of control over it so I can make it work. So in summary, this monitor has been really great for productivity. I'm 
now pretty much bought into ultra wides as a thing. The space is so good for doing design work on a regular basis. And my only negative, that being reflections, is controllable. Okay, now that we're done productivity, I do want to give a little bit of a shout out for gaming because I did a bit more gaming than usual over the past two weeks because I really wanted to push this through its paces and I kind of had a blast. This monitor is not categorized as a gaming monitor. Those ones tend to have much higher refresh rates. They focused on lower response time, stuff like that. But that doesn't mean you can't do it, and it's been really fun to use this. I played through a lot of Tunic, which was a beautiful Zelda game that was just my backlog that I wanted to get to. It looks great in ultra wide. I also played through Hi-Fi Rush. This just came out really vibrant colors and a really great, fun game. And I've also been playing Forza Horizon 5, which is a driving game, and that has been really relaxing. There's something about the ultra wide aspect ratio that has the environment whizzing by just make this way more immersive. So even though the refresh rate is completely normal at a weird 72 hertz, you can do 60, but I just bumped it up to 72, not that I notice. The size alone is really fantastic, really engrossing for games. All right, so what's the verdict? Well, if you've been watching this video up to this point, you're probably not surprised. I am definitely keeping it. To be honest, after a couple days, I was like 80% sure that I was going to hold on to this monitor. And after two weeks, that is 100% sure. This thing is awesome. I'm having a hard time imagining going back to a regular sized, regular sized 27 inch monitor after using this. I do want to reinforce that this is totally a luxury kind of upgrade. It's not going to transform my work output by any means, but it is definitely more comfortable. And the way I've been thinking about this too, probably justify it to myself is people talk about how you spend a third of your life in bed. So it makes sense to invest in a good mattress, a good bed setup and all that stuff. And when you think about your monitor, your primary display, you spend, well, I spend 10 hours a day on average on weekdays working on this thing. So heck, that's more time than I usually spend in bed. That's definitely more time than I spend in bed. So over the past two weeks, I know that I've been getting a lot out of this and I will keep getting a lot out of this every single day. So in my opinion, if you have the desk space and uh, of course the funds for it, I think it's a pretty dang good upgrade. And for all the designers out there that have maybe briefly looked at curved monitors and been scared away at the idea that, ooh, my straight lines are not gonna be straight anymore, it, it doesn't matter. You're not really gonna think about it at all. Maybe if you're doing print work, maybe, but honestly, I think you're the way that your brain processes visual information and does a lot of funky stuff to it already, you end up just not seeing the curve very, very quickly. Okay, that's it. That's my two week review of an ultra wide monitor, which I am definitely keeping. All right, if you like this video, I would appreciate a like and subscribe down below. It really helps me out, helps people find this channel and uh, helps me produce more videos because more people are subbing and all that stuff. So I would love that. Also, if you do have any questions on ultra wide and my experience or design, hit me up in the comments. I like reading those and responding to people there. So please engage. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for me. Once again, I'm Wayne and thank you for watching. Bye.